right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all very much for joining us here today for this exciting announcement. We all know the last 16 months have been tough for most of our businesses in the city because of the COVID-19 global pandemic. And it was hard. Nobody had a global pandemic on their business plan, you know, 18 months or so ago. And then, bam, it came and hit. And it was very difficult to move through that. And suddenly, businesses' strategy went from thriving to just trying to survive and get through the year. And as a longtime business person, I don't say that lightly because that's the last thing you're trying to do as a business, survive. You want to grow each and every year. But survival was at the top of mind. And many of our businesses uh, came through. Some actually grew. Uh, some didn't make it. We had a lot of money at Metro Government from uh, federal grants that we were able to get out to stabilize people. So we were appreciative for that. But one of the things that we saw throughout that period was black and minority owned businesses faced some of the harshest impacts from the pandemic because in most cases uh, many of them were already starting from far behind in the first place because of really the differences in entrepreneurship and business presences business presence in black owned businesses louisville's story is america's story relative to that 2.4 percent of the businesses in louisville are black owned versus 24 percent representation in our population and that's the same story in cities all across America. So we are determined to do something about that, and today's announcement is part of that. We are emerging from the pandemic, as I mentioned, and the recession, but we still have a lot of work to do to reverse the impact of a disinvestment, a disenfranchisement that has impacted our black and brown business owners for far too long. So we want to be preactive. And just as we were proactive in helping businesses weather the pandemic through our small business COVID-19 grant and loan programs, we must also be proactive in our efforts to provide greater support for black and minority owned businesses. In the fiscal year 22 budget, we increased our investment in supporting black and minority owned businesses, funding more than $13 million in initiatives, including $25,000 to support capacity building for the Black Business Association, $65,000 to hire West Louisville Senior Economic Development Manager for Louisville Forward, $100,000 for added funds for Minority Business Incubator, $250,000 for the Equity and Procurement Task Force, $2.7 million for the creation of a new Small Business Assistance Fund, and $10 million for the West End Opportunity Partnership. Last week, we were at Louisville Central Community Center talking about those support services and resources for black and minority owned businesses that I just mentioned. And we highlighted entrepreneur Corey Bailey and the business he founded, Bailey Construction and General Contracting. Today, I am excited to announce the next steps in these small business services, and that is a new minority business incubator. In late March, Louisville Metro government issued a request for proposals to organizations to create and operate an incubator focused specifically on helping black and minority owned businesses. We received 10 responses and out of those one really stood out and that was the one submitted by SKS accounting and consulting firm that clearly rose to the top. SKS's responses stood out in part because they identified gaps in the current small business resource ecosystem and are aiming to fill those. Now, in terms of money, we originally allocated $100,000 for the incubator with available funds last year, but with our FY22 budget that just started July 1st, we're able to commit another $100,000 to ensure the longer-term sustainability of the incubator. So that $200,000 will be shepherded very well by our champion, Kena Samuel Stith, who's the founder of SKS Accounting and Consulting Firm. And I had the pleasure of meeting Kina one to two months ago, yes. it was, at the Seafood Lady. Uh, and if anybody that's eaten at the Seafood Lady before, you've been able to kind of witness the really positive growth that they've had as a restaurant. And it's hard to do that in one location, but Seafood Lady has figured out how to scale that up. And so the cooking of the good food, of course, is essential. But if you do not have the infrastructure to support, to grow the other aspects of your business, the back office aspects of your business, the procurement aspects of your business, you're just not going to be able to do it. So it's really impressive 
to see what the seafood lady has done. And I did not know until that day that one of the secret weapons that she had was Kena Samuel Stith and her, and her team at SKS. So just really delighted to see them win this incubator contest here. So please tell us more. Congratulations. Hello all. I just want, I'm honored to be awarded this grant um, to collaborate with the Louisville Forward um, and all the incubators for the small businesses, the, the minority owned businesses that we will be able to scale. Um, a special thanks again to Mayor Fisher, the city of Louisville, Louisville Forward, and our SKS team. Um, many people have had the opportunity to plant the seed, but they've never really been able to see it grow. And this is, this is very natural to us because we've been doing this work for 22 years. And now we've been able to have this opportunity for this grant to show and, and scale more of the businesses that are entrepreneurs here. We need that opportunity, and this is the day that to hear the words that we will receive $100,000, an additional $100,000, an additional $100,000 to help support our community. It is needed. After COVID, a lot of the businesses um, in the um, black businesses did not make it. They did not come back. And during that pandemic, our team was very successful in trying to uh, get loans, secure. We worked the entire time through the pandemic. Uh, we, we've lost businesses. We've lost um, businesses that tried to come back, but this is a, still another opportunity to give them to actually reverse that and see what they need to do as far as the uh, system now with technology. And it's a new brand in terms of new business models that is going to be important. And that's going to be our, one of our focuses on the business. Um, we have a, true, a proven track record. Um, it's funny that when we were at Seafood Lady, we were talking about um, different organizations and different things that uh, we could work on uh, to collaborate with. And I, I thought about it, and our firm has become business coaches. Um, we're entrepreneurs. We're job creators. Uh, sometimes we're marriage counselors, so we can sustain the business over here and make sure that all the money is flowing in so everybody is successful. Oftentimes when we were trying to be cheerleaders during COVID because everyone was broken, um, and at that time we had to stay strong. We had, to, even in my own team, um, having at this time you know, 15 staff um, trying to think about their kids, their mortgages, how I, we were going to sustain and how I was going to keep a straight face to ensure that that would be successful. And we, I mean, God's will, we continue to push, push, push. And if our businesses stayed open, then we were going to be successful as well. And here we still stand um, as a strong business, stronger than ever, as far as our team. Some of the people that you see behind me have been 22 years, started my dining room table 22 years ago. Um, and from here, we have multiple offices in the city. Our payroll company, uh, we have 20, we're in 22 states with our payroll company, one of the, uh, one of the only black owned uh, service providers in the state of Kentucky, uh, marketing payroll services. So we continue to grow and we continue to collectively group all minority owned businesses, um, women owned businesses, we, we are their cheerleaders. So we support them in structure. We support them now. We have the ability to actually have a location that we can actually house the organization. So if they had to have a, a business meeting, we're going to teach them business models. So everything that we've been doing, we're going to teach them the accounting pieces. We're the experts in the finance uh, arena. We, we have a deep industry, and we want to basically now scale that up to support. We've been, we've kind of pushed out all of our offices. We, we convert offices all the time when people need a space um, to do their presentations. And sometimes they're very comfortable because we look like one another. And so where we're trying to get working capital, where we're trying to make sure that they have the right attorneys, accountants, uh, media, marketing, operational functions, we are going to make sure that, that, that every technical assistance person is comfortable looking at the person across from them. So that is going to be our drive. That is going to be our focus. Um, oftentimes people are asking what the well, why the word well? Why was the word? Um, so well has, has a history of symbolic um, centers in the community. Obviously it's water, but it's very, there's different things as far as the sustainability. Um, metaphorically, the well represents all social resources of the community. 
that's needed to be to endure and thrive. So when we thought about that, we thought about prosperity, we thought about abundance, and we just want someone to come to our facility, which will be high tech, and we're going to have, if they don't have a computer, we're gonna make sure that we loan them a computer at that time. We're going to continue to teach and educate those who are basically in, in not accepted amongst those who don't, they're just not accepted, period. So I'm saying that we are going to grow with the well. The well is going to focus on the small businesses and adopt new business models. And we're going to support, we have other partners that are going to be on our team, but with our Louisville entrepreneurs, we're unmatched as far as the top technical assistance that we're going to provide. Um, we are also going to collaborate with other uh, incubators in the city. The reason oftentimes people have asked why are you why are you going to Dixie Highway because we strategically plan that place that because there's a lot of other incubators that are going to support one another. So we're all in this together when it comes down to making sure that black businesses, minority businesses are going to be successful. So if it's something in, in our wheelhouse that we don't have, we're going to make a phone call and make sure that we're working with the other organizations. But I think we've got a lot of things covered. Some of the programming that we will have, um, as I mentioned. Uh, we're going to have, again, teching because of COVID. We're going to make sure that some of your professional services um, are adopted uh, from knowing how to do basic Zoom meetings. A lot of times we were struggling. A lot of times people, we had to teach that to our uh, core clients that they didn't understand. And then again, new startups. So startups are oftentimes fearful of new change, but if we bundle those packages together and teach each and every one, they will be comfortable and be successful in any other uh, arena that they see that they need to go into that doesn't have their core team with them, such as their accounting firm or such as their lawyer. They feel confident, and confident will grow and build generational wealth when they grow their companies. So we're ready to get started. We look forward to it, and we will see you guys at the top of the year. All right, thank you very much. And I hope, look forward to the ribbon cutting at the well. All right. Now, uh, Dave Etkin is on hand as well. Dave, as you all know, is the director of Kentucky Small Businesses Development Center. And the center is one of the city's leading resource providers for small businesses. Uh, his team provided invaluable assistance to us during our small business COVID-19 relief grant program. And Dave, we really appreciate all that help. And we were able to help a lot of folks on that couldn't have done it without you. And so they know what challenges businesses are facing and what they need to overcome, what they went through with COVID. And Dave is able to tell us why having this new incubator resource is so important to our city. Dave Aitken. First of all, congratulations, Keenan SKS. You guys do wonderful work. And thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, thank you for all your dedication and hard work over the last 18 months. Uh, you and your teams worked tirelessly to support the community's businesses through the pandemic. And your continued support um, th through with those businesses, communities that are still underserved. Throughout the pandemic, the team and I at the Louisville Small Business Development Center worked closely with the mayor, Rebecca, Christy, and the team at Louisville Forward to support the community's businesses. Specifically, we worked in tandem with Louisville Forward on the Metro COVID Relief Grant Program, providing application and documentation support. <clears throat> After that work was complete, we often kept in contact with the grantees and further supported them as long as necessary. You know, it was really hard work, but it was really rewarding. We learned a lot working with hundreds of businesses and learning about their challenges that they faced. You know, unfortunately, there is a 13 to one wealth gap between black and white families in Louisville. This causes several things that often make it more difficult for minority businesses to succeed. Firstly, minority entrepreneurs may have fewer friends and family that they can reach out and find that initial startup or emergency capital. They are more likely to be denied access to loans and other resources. Secondly, they often lack the informal and formal network of business support that entrepreneurs have. With only 2% of Louisville businesses black owned, it may be difficult for minority entrepreneurs to find suitable mentors to turn to. They need that advice to grow their business for personal referrals and critical services like CPAs. The Minority Business Enterprise Incubator is another positive step 
and providing cooperative, coordinating wraparound services for our communities, minorities, entrepreneurs, and business owners, and providing needed capital for minority businesses, ensuring their success, and creating generational wealth. Thank you, Mayor, for making this a reality. Thank you, Dave, appreciate that. I want to recognize a few other folks here. Verne Goatley is here. She's our director of the Human Relations Commission. Thank you, Verne. And Rebecca Flyshaker here, who is the co-chief of Louisville Forward and whose group selected uh, our team here for our incubator. So we appreciate all their good work and help in that. So to the community, if you need help getting your business off the ground or growing, particularly if you're a black or minority business owner, reach out to our economic development team at Louisville Forward for the help and they can assist you in helping you craft a business plan, connect you to resource providers like Dave, help you apply for one or more of our Metco small businesses loans, and many, many more. They can introduce you to SKS if you need that as well. Basically, we're just here to help you grow your businesses and grow your wealth and grow opportunities for the community. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for coming by, and congrats again to the SKS team. Yep.